Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who's watching us right now. My name is Adrian Rinfrika. I'm a travel advisor of Glory Future Foundation and also your host for today's session. The Glory Future Foundation is a volunteer organization that officially launched on January 1st, 2021, and it's working to bring change to the world. The Glory Future Foundation has been working on children's health awareness, education, organizing picnics with children, raising awareness among the youth about child marriage, preventing drugs, creating social awareness, tree planting, climate, clean water, blood donation, and many more. Today, our topic is storytelling. So we're going to hear fantastic stories from amazing children. But before we get started, let me introduce our amazing guest. Warmly welcome to Michelle Rule, our advisor of Glory Foundation from Canada, Yasir Yawunihu, child advisor from Nigeria, Jebe Hassan Rizal, child leader from Bangladesh, Manak, child leader from India, Elizabeth, child leader from Nigeria, Ellen, child leader from Georgia, and last but not least, we also have Mosbik, our amazing supporter from Bangladesh. So before we get started, let's watch a short video from Glory Future Foundation. Okay, so sharing story is a really great activity for children because when children feel hard, they go to be strong and stand tall. There are so many things we worry about for them, but how often do we remember to see them for who they are here and now? Let the children give their voice and a stage where they can share their ideas. So now, please welcome Elizabeth, our child leader from Nigeria, to be the first guest speaker in our session today. Elizabeth, thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay, the yeah. stage is yours, and we are super excited to hear your amazing story. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here today. My name is Elizabeth Ogumodede. I am a Nigerian, and I am a child leader of Glory Future Foundation. I'll be reading from my collection of stories titled Lessons from Grandma. I wrote it when I was in primary three, which is grade three, grade three. And um, it's a collection of short stories for kids. But before I start, I'd like to read about the book. It's Lessons from Grandma is a mix of didactic bedtime stories. They are meant to instill morals in the lives of the young, and they also provide a mirror through which adults can examine life and its values. First, I'll be reading The Bee, the Butterfly, and the Wise Monkey. Once upon a time, when honey was the apple of every creature's eye, there lived a bee known as Bombi, well esteemed for her sweet honey production skills. Near and far, all villages derived excessive joy just by the thought of serving their guests her delicious juice. Bombi never disregarded the mightiness of time, for it was for it waits for no one, so she was always in the habit of making haste to run along with time. One afternoon, during the hours when she busied herself with preparations of honey making, a stranger walked up to her. A great afternoon to you, Bombi. The confused black and yellow striped bee stared at the creature in front of her. Good afternoon, how may I help you? Um, I've heard a lot of fabulous tales about you, Bombi. Moreover, I am a fan of you and I enjoy the product of your handiwork. I am Butterfly from a neighboring town. Bombi smiled at her. 
Thank you so much for your compliments, Butterfly. Well, I guess I have some things to do now, if that's all I can help you with. Six is the clock. All you have to do, do quick, so I have to get going. Wait, Bumby, I need your help. Butterfly wore a gloomy face. How? I need your assistance, Bumby. I've been unable to meet the due date for my house rent, and I've been kicked out by my landlord. I was wondering if I could get a job with you and probably stay here for a few days till I can raise money for a house. Bumby stroked an imaginary beard. I would have been really glad to help you in both ways, but it's impossible. I can only let you stay with me for a few days. I have enough time working under me for now, and I don't think I can, I can employ any other worker. Butterfly fell to her knees and held Bombi's hand. Thank you, Bombi. I'll never be able to repay you. I heard it from sources that you are a kind-hearted person and would be ready to assist me. I promise I won't let you down. Oh, right to your feet. I believe it is good to help the needy. You should drop your belongings inside so you can accompany me. Since you are not from this town, I believe you would find it hard getting around. I would introduce you to a friend who can employ you when tomorrow comes. Thank you, Butterfly smirked. Faint streams of light from the moon kissed a slightly spherical figure who turned aimlessly on the bed. But the crowds from a rooster made her hop. She had to walk past the sitting room before getting to the warehouse. Good morning, Bombi. Thank you for your kind act yesterday. Bombi could make out that figure even in the darkness. A blessed morning, butterfly. No need to thank me. All I did was out of generosity. She walked over to a table in the middle of the room. Should have put, you should have put on the lamp instead of sitting in sheer darkness. Thank you for your care, Bombi. I feared the light might wake you up, so I decided not to put it on since you had a tiring day yesterday. You had to come back from your honey making, still return to the village square to sell your products, return home and do some things in your warehouse and listen to reports from your top employees before going to bed in the late hours of the night while I was already sound asleep. I am used to that routine. It's part of my normal life, so I... So it doesn't tire me out any longer. I am always up by this time or before this time if I have more important things to do. Sometimes I sleep later than last night. You always have to make sacrifices if you so much want something. I wanted a great and successful life, so I have to continue sacrificing for it. She smiled at Butterfly. Why is there a grimace on your face? It's just the memory of not sacrificing. I would not have been thrown out of my house if I had done my very best. You just have to make us for a brief moment. Do you mind joining me in the warehouse? Not at all, Bombi. Butterfly followed the bee into the room. Don't you lock your warehouse? No, Bombi replied and to walk. I shall I'll take you to this. I'm sorry, before I continue, I hope the story is not boring. I hope the story is not boring. Is it pleasant? Okay, um, I think I'll go on. Bombi paused for a while and thought. Okay, sorry. I see. Butterfly nodded. I would like to go sightseeing around the town today before you return so I can be conversant with the environment. Bombi paused for a while and thought. It's fine, but make sure you are out of danger's way. I will. Bombi curled her lips. It took a few minutes for Butterfly to get her stuff ready. Her cart and chauffeur were waiting outside, ready to be ridden down to the village square. Though the distance from her house to the square was short, she needed to be helped because she was always loaded with jars of honey. A few employees were already at the square, helping her set up her spot, while others helped offload the cart. Good morning, Bombi. Morning, boss. I hope you had a nice time, boss. The workers all greeted with smiling faces. Thank you all. I hope, I hope you enjoyed your night yesterday. Had always been a reply. Then a series of positive answers would ring out. A lot of customers were already queued up in the front of her kiosk. Bombi knew the jars of honey which she left in the kiosk last night 
would have been consumed by now. She knew she would have made it earlier, if not for our little heart-to-heart -heart talk with her newly found friend. Bombi greeted the customers, but was welcomed by their angry voices for being delayed. With an awkward smile, she got into the safety of her kiosk. She was receiving notable guests and talking proposals with them when she heard noises outside. Bombi beckoned on her secretary. Go have a look and tell me what is going on out there. Yes, ma'am. Dragonfly flew away in a haste. What's going on out there? One chief pig inquired, rolling his eyes. It's nothing, chief. I believe they would sort it out sooner. I have a feeling that the honey did not go round and that is causing the commotion, replied Bombi. Is it always like that? Inquired Chief Horse from another neighboring village. Yes, said Dog, one of the king's palace guards, before Bombi cooled. I come here every blessed day on the order of his royal majesty, King Lion, to purchase, ho to purchase honey for the entire royal household. Most times, I and my fellows come here four to five times a day if necessary. I mean, when there is an event at the palace. Yes, sir, Dog knows it all, Bombi added. Dragonfly returned. Pardon me, sirs. The attention of my madam is needed out there. She can't keep us waiting, said Elephant. Sorry, Chief Elephant, but I guess this is very important. Lest my secretary would not come in, running like a mad one. Bombi bowed to them and exited. As soon as Dragonfly knew they were out of hearing, she began to talk. She began to talk. Madam, there is fire on the mountain. Bombi frowned at her. How do you mean? All animals are enraged and they are living. The honey, the honey, it, what happened to the honey? Bombi snapped. I tasted it for myself. It is, a, it is as bitter as gall. Everyone has dispersed this place. Madam, they say they shall never come here again. I don't know what to do, madam. What would we tell those well-known figures waiting for us? I heard there's going to be a grand event at the palace today. I'm so scared and confused. Bombi stared with wide eyes. Tell me this is all a dream, Dragonfly. Tell me I am dreaming or slap me so I can wake up. Dragonfly frowned. What do you mean, madam? Dragonfly, wake me from this dream. Slap me. Dragonfly swallowed hard and hit her madam's cheek. How dare you hit me, Dragonfly? Madam, I thought I heard you say I should slap you. You fool. You should have known I was shocked. All I have worked for and built for several years just crumpled in the twinkle of an eye. Watching her boss cry was hurting her deep in the heart. Bombi had never screamed at her workers before. Neither had she called them hurtful names. But she did that today, showing how miserable she felt. She wanted to do something to help, but there was nothing to do. She understood that word would get to every nook and cranny of the entire village and beyond. And beyond, that would be the end of her career. Bombi was shocked to find out that Butterfly had left. There was no trace of her. She dropped a note saying she had gone. But why? Bombi asked herself. She suspected something fishy. One night, this mysterious creature was seeking for help, and by day, she was gone for good without the help she needed, and she didn't even leave an explanation of why she left. Bombi sat down. She needed to act fast. She would not just sit and watch the empire she worked for gradually crumble right before her two naked eyes. Her parents were dead, not a single soul to take her under her wings. She had no family member to confide in. All of a sudden, she could hear her mom's voice loud and clear in her head. The creator would always be there for you when nobody else is. Bombi could, feel, could feel tears glide down her cheeks. Those were her mother's last words before joining her ancestors, leaving her in this world with no other person to rely on since her father had died years back. That was the answer. A wise old monkey lived in the distant side of the village, far from eyes that were not seeking the creator just yet. The great cave was hidden in the middle of nowhere, grazed with thick vegetation. Bombi had just stepped her feet inside the great temple when an indescribable feeling overwhelmed her. I know why you're here, Bombi. Bombi stopped moving. The monkey was sitting in the lotus position and the bee knew he was meditating. Old one, I need your help. His eyes were still shut and he did not even move. I know your parents taught you to be hospitable, kind and loving, but I fear that your kind gesture got you into this mess. Bombi frowned. What do you mean, the old one? 
The monkey smiled without exposing any of his teeth. The creature you assisted stabbed you in the back. The bee was confused. I, I can't believe this. Then don't believe any of the remedies the creator recommends. I'm ready to hear what you have for me, priest, said Bombi after a minute's silence. Monkey gave one of his smiles once more. It is very simple, except for the fact that the creatures will not be willing to purchase from you again. All you need to do is to start producing more dads of honey. We would have one or two rites to perform, and I believe that everything else will fall into place. I'm ready to do anything, priest. Good. Bring me a jar of the best honey you would ever make and leave the rest to me. But make sure you return by sunrise tomorrow. You may leave now. May the creator go with you. Bombi nodded, doing as bidding. She returned the next day as planned. The priest... Welcome to the presence of the creator, Bombi. There is your there is your jar of honey on the table. Add a spoon of this honey to every other jar of honey you would produce till it is finally consumed. Don't forget, every jar till the last drop is finished. Then you can begin your sales. I wish you luck for eternity, as the creator has risen for you and destroyed your enemies. Now depart from here and continue to live in good, in joy and good health. Thank you so much for listening. That was a, a story that taught quite a lot of morals. The first one is that you don't have to, sorry, I mean, when you, when you are in need of a solution, you should go to the creator for help. It also teaches another moral that is being jealous is not good at all because most times when you try to bring others to their downfall, you end up being punished for it, either by physical or spiritual um, ways. And I, another lesson which you can learn from the story is that if you want to succeed, you have to work hard and be diligent at all times. You have to be hardworking and make sure that you are always in the habit of working with time because time waits for no one uh, thank you so much should i read another story or someone else would like to do that is it a rot rotation rotational reading or i can go on with my second story oh thank you so much also for amazing story we really appreciate it and enjoy your story um it's really important to me that it's true that jealousy is really, really not a um, thing. It's not a thing that we should do because if we want to lead ourselves, we don't need to put down others because in a frame time, everything that we do and we put to others is going to be back to ourselves again. And for this time, we are going to continue to the next guest speaker, Mana. Can you hear me? Are you ready? Yes, I am. Just one. Wait. Okay. okay. I'm ready. Okay, my stage is yours, and we really appreciate it and excited to hear your stories. Sure. And Elizabeth, once again, it's a really great story. Shall I start? Okay, sure. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the storytellers present here. I am Manat Bampi Nehita, child leader from India. Ah, namaste. Today I'm going to share my true story on fear. Do you know what is fear? Let me tell you. Fear is a powerful emotion. Fear alerts us of presence or danger. So here I go. I always wanted to learn swimming, so I joined swimming classes during my summer break with an aim to learn swimming seven feet deep underwater. But it's first two classes, so many students crying and screaming with fear of drowning. Do you know what happened? It affected me psychologically. I also reacted in the same way. Even I vomited in fear. But all these 
did not work. I had to go and jump in jail. But I was obsessed with the fear that I will drown. Looking at this, my instructor made me realize. Manat, you only fear, not try. It will not change you. You have to do it wholeheartedly. So threw me in deep. And to overcome my fear, I moved my hands and legs and came out successfully. This challenge gave me courage to overcome my fear and I participated in inter-class swimming competition and stood third. What do we understand? But this story, let me tell you, fear has two meanings. Forget everything and run, face everything and rise. Choice is yours. Hope you make the better choice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maya, for amazing story. And it's really, really good. And it's exactly that we also always have a choice in no matter what because we also have a reason and every decision that we met really followed by another story that already happened in our lives so in order to get all out of the fear in our life we can always have a choice and we can have a choice to go forward and just do whatever we can to reach what we dream and before we start to another special guest let us hear amazing inspirational words from our advisor from Canada, Ms. Aru. Okay. Okay. Hello. Can there. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah great. So you can tell us our story is really, really wonderful today. And maybe you can give some point of view from. Alice said that story and also from Anna. Yeah, I thought that both stories were fantastic. Um, Elizabeth, I'm so glad that you wrote your stories down even when you were young and, and now they've been made into a book to be shared. I think that's really exciting. Um, not too many people your age have books <laughs> already written. So yeah, so you can be very proud of that. And Manette, I loved your story. I loved your goggles. <laughs> and I loved your enthusiasm when you told the story. I could tell you were very excited about sharing your story. And I think it's great that you shared a story from your own life. And you are absolutely right. Fear is just fear. It can't stop us. If we take a break and pause and, and calm down, then we can get past the fear and we can do anything. And I'm glad that now you know how to swim because that's really important. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Michelle, for your opinion of really amazing stories. Now we're going to continue to Ellen. Are you ready to share your story? Okay. okay. Hello everyone. I am Elena Shalabeza from Georgia. Today I am very happy because I am part of you. It means so much to me. Okay. Uh, I always try to be active and show my ability to the maximum. This is fact uh, by my parents and teachers as well as world leaders. I am a very successful student in my school and I have been singing and dancing Georgia National Dances for three years. I have received many awards. I am the best soloist in my region and the second place winner in an international festival. I was also invited to the big cities of Georgia and I want to proudly say I won and I was invited to the festival in Lithuania. Unfortunately, I was interpreted by COVID pandemic. I have passed four training course on American projects related to entrepreneurship and we have created many projects. With them, 
money we received we helped a four family uh, i am a winner of many olympiads in various subjects and i have gold and silver diplomas i am also active to the to the uh, tbc platform uh, we are uh, suffering a lot today we are all forced uh, to from our functions with the moment so i with respect to nature we set up little functions did you know that the un global goals uh, are any actions uh, plan for the world and the people uh, around with 93 countries are united um, if these goals are fulfilled uh, by our joint uh, efforts for 2030 years, uh, the life on earth will uh, be better uh, for everyone. Uh, what this world means it, is it uh, that there should uh, be not more poverty in any country that in any other from and um, that there should be safe and healthy food every year uh, to have access to health care for each of us uh, to have well-being and healthy living everyone should be to able to get and education equality and gender equality women and girls have the same opportunities in mass and boys each person will be more equal and happier uh, in 14 uh, uh of these goals the un global goals also call for everyone to drink safe water and maintain cessation uh, uh we can uh, use safe energy uh economic growth to uh, be sustainable and stable uh let everyone have a steady job of, of imperative uh in in breakers and promote innovation uh right inequality in uh, all countries as well as uh, between countries develop cities at uh, and at that moment so as no to harm uh, the environment the people uh, this is how we will uh, achieve the common good of the people together uh, and in order to take care of uh, our environment we must take anger to uh, measures to reduce the importance uh, of climate change and uh, its uh, impact to on global uh, climate change, uh, promote the sustainable use and promotion of the seas and oceans, uh, restore uh, and protect Earth ecosystems uh, by achieving each of these goals. A society uh, will be formed. Uh, we are here. We will. Peace and justice uh, strengthened by strong innovation. It is important for everyone to be involved and parting to achieve the goals of sustainable development. We are also part of uh, this process. Ask for these goals to be achieved. Contribute and share this important information with everyone. My friend, my voice to the world to fight together with this goal. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alain. That was really amazing. And yes, it's true that we all need to take a part to change the world because we are stronger together. Right? Thank you so much, Alain. Thank you. Okay, next guest, we are having Moose Freak, our amazing supporter from Bangladesh. Are you ready to share your story, Moose Freak? Mushri, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. Okay. I can start. Can I start? Wait, wait a minute. Okay. alaikum, everyone. I hope everyone's well. I'm fine too. Firstly, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Mushrik, I'm in class 6 in the Bangalore Gop High School. I live in Bangladesh and my GC is Bangladesh in the division of Kuhn. 
I'm 11 years old. I live in Bangladesh. I love my parents very much and I love my all teachers and all friends very much too. I love reading stories and reciting poems and I love writing stories of poems. Thank you, my teacher, for giving me this opportunity to tell short stories on this platform. Have a great chance to tell short stories on this platform is a happy feeling of mine. Foundation is the best, wonder and best international platform of the world. I'm so happy to be a supporter of Glory Closer Foundation. I'm a child. In my opinion, every child is the future leader of the nation and the whole world. We need to love children. We need to keep an eye on what the baby needs. Love them and give the opportunities in every case. No one has the right to price children. This real life is a little difficult. We should use this time of student life to take the right part. We all need to uh, remember that time and tide wait for none. Today, I'm going to tell a short story. The story is my own writing. The story's name is The Success of a Girl's Real Life. Once upon a time, there was a poor family living in a village. The child named Nipa was born in the family. The affected family, she never ate too handful of food in a full stomach. She was six years old when she was first admitted to the school. Her father was a rich puller who couldn't eat properly at education. She had three more to get first place at five. However, in the midst of so much hardship, no place. Oh, okay, let's put it back. Okay, okay Mushfik, you can continue here. Oh, sorry for that. Um. Okay, you can continue here. Oh. How about in the mix so much hard trip? No one could take Ellie her first place. And from the class five onward, she tried to rent her own expenses and earn money by teasing. She used to go out without teaching in the morning. She ate only light snack at night with the tears in her eyes. She ate food and didn't have to parry to ask for it from her family. Her only wish was that one day she would work hard and grow up. Her family had to suffer a lot because of her mother's illness. She couldn't get treatment due to lack of money. From that day on, she promised that she one day become a doctor. There are tears in her eyes all the time because of suffering. Many people used to insult her a lot and some people used to tell her very emotional. But Nipa never gave up her own weakness. Her eyes were full of dreams. Her heart was full of hope and she started walking with the blessing and love for all.
gradually she tried to retain her own achievements, even though she had a thousand troubles in mind. There was a half of a smile on her face. She didn't even have a nice dress to go out with. As we end, uh, who got tired of medals since coming. A family is very proud of her. There is a great doctor. Today, she is an important doctor for the helpless and poor patient. Now, the rapper remembering again and again about her mother's treatment. Her father treated her mother by borrowing money in exchange of her interest. Today, she wants to continue the service, remembering all the sorrow. She wants no other mother to have to go to others for medical treatment, like her own mother. As a doctor, feels very blessed. We comment at the end of the story, there are many hardships behind success in life. The only one who has in success in the one who works hard in life. There is a lot of morality in my story. I highlighted two ethics in this story. Number one, industry is the key to success. And number two, if there's a will, there's a way. Thanks to our dear host and thanks to my YouTube teacher uh, for listening to me. Thank you so much, Pussy. It was really, really great. And it's good that you've written all of it for yourself. Okay, um, Michelle Rule, could you please give us maybe some point of view that you can address to all of us from Musti, written beautifully, and also from Ellen? Yes. Um, Ellen, I loved the way that you were speaking so enthusiastically about the UN Global Goals and your your understanding of those is very, very deep. I'm very impressed with that. I also was pleased to hear about your dancing. That's really an exciting um, hobby and um, I'm so glad that you've been able to follow through with that and, and that you've gotten so good at it. That's really, really great. So thank you for telling us all of that story. That was really great to hear. There she is. <laughs> now I can see her. Um, yeah. And Mushfiq, another writer in the group. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you write your own stories. That was a wonderful story. One line really spoke to my heart when you said, her dreams are in her eyes so beautiful that was a beautiful line and um and the the morals in the story were very good so i think you did just a wonderful job thank you so much mushfiq thank you so much michelle for your amazing inspiration words and um, next we're going to continue for the next guest jabir hassan are you ready to share your story Uh, let me know if you can guys hear me. Yes. Okay, I'm studying. Yes, my okay. okay. So everyone, okay. Again, what I have learned through the events of I'm studying my story without wasting any more time. When I was a seven years old kid, when I didn't understand much, my grandmother told me, uh, my grandmother told me something important, something very important, the value of food, which I did not understand then. She said that this life struggle is very difficult. Whoever wins this life struggle will be able to do great things in his life. And whoever falls this life struggle will lose his life. 
and to win this life struggle you have to overcome many obstacles i did not understand any of these words okay. but exactly six letters i understand the meaning of the word if you want to be a successful person you have to work hard every human being has to be has to go on an unfamiliar place in his life i also went to a uh, no one know me there and my own i just remembered what my mother grandmother said in the new place i used to get very upset at first thinking only of my own people but in that place when i started to get acquainted, uh, acquainted with my world everyone started to be my friend now, now the moral of my story is work hard and always to be yourself don't be afraid of any situation if you have the courage to fight situations you will shine in your life nothing ever goes as planned in this accursed world the long you live the more you will realize to be very encouraged fight all this situation thank you stay are my so we are are you there Oh, I think there's connection problem. Okay. All right, we are going to wait a little bit till he's back in here. So we can continue his story. Oh, okay. It sounds like he is trying to get back here. So while waiting him to get back with us, we can continue the next guest, Yasir from Nigeria. Are you there, Yasir? Yasir? Okay. Okay. Yes, here and Jabir, are you here? Yes. I'm here. Can I read okay. now? Okay. While well, waiting. Jabir and Yasir, Elizabeth, you can tell us your second story as you have said before. Are you ready to? Thank you so much. Your... Well, it's quite short compared to the first one, and it's tight. When passion speaks. The demise of two friends who I would live to never forget shook me and made me bawl all day long. They were Karen and Carrie, 
two sisters who were a major part of my story. They stood by me when the, when the world seemed to be craving in, and they partook in my joy when it seemed like the doors of heaven had opened upon me in my favor. I'll live to remember the lovely moments we spent together. Thousands and thousands of lunches we had together at pizza places, cafes, restaurants, gardens, and parks, marred and made our bond stronger. On most evenings, we would sit in my garden. Our picnic mat was one that was patterned with all our favorite colors. Our picnic basket would have been filled with food prepared by us, enjoy sandwiches, fruits, bread, cakes, and juices. Girly talks of fashion, parties, and everything under the sun would never be eluded. Then we would settle down with it, settle, settle down with Can you unmute your microphone? Oh. Um. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Can you hear me now? now? Yes, we can hear you. And you okay. can hear me. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes Carrie would dramatize some prose work she had crafted in a falsetto voice. Then Karen would plead to read some piece of poetry I had written out loud to nature and us in her pitchy voice. With much confidence, she would criticize our works. Her criticism was always sensible and full of wisdom. As a wonderful critic that she was, she was unbiased. Some days, Karen would have some sketches which she had shown to us. Other times, she would simply sit in the peaceful garden and finish up a sketch or begin afresh Why at times when we'll sit together while some sweet lyrics of great artists blended in perfect harmony with their beat and rhythm. There were days when we would also wander around bookstores, books, bookstores shop for books, see a movie which a beloved friend not to find fault and errors in the plot of books and movies. Then we would go for a burger or small chops before heading home. It all seems like yesterday, those times when we consoled one another and kept going, even against turbulent situations. We all had gets going. We learned from each other great principles of life that I have grown to cherish and pass on to my children. As the years went by, I, I realized that I was lucky to have had friends who were as precious as gold while growing up. Karen and Carrie were friends who walked and lived as if there was no tomorrow. They gave me their shoulders to cry on and showered me with love. Oh, how I wish I had not invited them both to come over to that stately home in our country, in our county. I remember that it all began with a phone call. Why don't we meet at the stately home today instead? I would love us to visit a greenhouse tomorrow. I glanced at my wristwatch. Karen and Carrie should have been here. It had been over 30 minutes since we last spoke. I had tried calling them, but neither of them was picking their calls. Mom, I said, you know, I should be meeting with my friends now. I had my mom's shaky breath, and I realized how unstable her voice was. You have to come. And then it dawned on me. My entire body went cold. Each time I look back at our friendship, I realized that it all ended with the beeps of the life support machines. We all liked literature. We adored the works of men from all races of the globe. Looking back at it all, I appreciate one unique trait Karen possessed that none of us had. I appreciated that she seemed to have the highest IQ amongst us all. The way she reasoned and spoke was witty. 
Above all, Karen didn't write like I and her sister did. Maybe she didn't have the passion for writing, but I know fervently that she was passionate when it comes to highlighting errors and solving mysteries. She had always wanted to become a detective. It hurts deeply that her dream was buried with her. Carrie, on the other hand, authored books. I and she both co-authored a few books, and today, when I refer to those published books I wrote with her, I can't but tell my audience of the greatest lover of literature I ever knew. Kids, to the teens around me, whilst you exist, you have to pursue your talent, allow your passion to drive you. Never forsake your passion. What you enjoy doing is is very important. If you love art, let it be your stepping stone. Science, commerce, literature, etc. can also be your ladder to the top if that's where your passion lies. The nasty and earthy flavor of my coffee awakens the memory of I and Carrie reading our favorite poem by an African poet over cups of over cups of Americano. It's a very lovely poem titled When the Poet I paced around the room, allowing the teenagers to make notes. Life has taught me to teach others, my audience and readers to ha to leave a legacy behind, either written or what people will see. Thank you so much for listening. That's the story. And I wrote it just to pass the message across that you don't have to be a writer for you to succeed in life. You can pursue your passion if you're an art hunter or whatever, wherever your passion lies. You just have to work towards it and success lies ahead of you if you do. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. It was really wonderful point that yes, it's true that we have to get and put effort into whatever patient that we are having. Okay, so now we are already having back Yasu with us. Yasu, can you hear me? Hello, Yasu? Okay. Okay, Yasu, yes, you can unmute your microphone and start sharing your amazing story. Uh, your microphone is unmute. You cannot hear your voice. You can unmute your microphone so we all can hear your story. Okay. Hi, Esther, can you hear me? Uh, you can unmute your microphone. So you can be audible. Okay. Oh, okay. It seems like he still has connection problem. Okay, well, waiting. Yes, here. Okay. Um. This is in facing internet connection problem. So, Miso Lu, can you please give your ideas about last story that Elizabeth just shared with us? Thank you. I thought Elizabeth's story was very touching. Um, she went through a, a very sad event with losing her friends, but she still was able to find the goodness in the lives of her friends, even though they were, they were short lives, and share the message that, that 
every day we should live towards our passion and every day try to do the things that bring us happiness, um, whether it's writing or or drawing or being a detective. Um, all of those things are important. So everyone should find their passion and and keep that in their lives every day somehow. And and so yeah, and and Elizabeth, I'm so sorry for your loss that um, but you have dealt with that with with bravery yourself and and are able to speak about your friends so beautifully now. So thank you for sharing that story. Okay, thank you so much, Michelle. And um, I think Jesse has internet connection problem. And as all of the guests already share their stories, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you and with all the beautiful efforts, beautiful work that all of you have played and have shared with all of us here. I'm really, really sure that together we can make a better world as the young generation like all of you are really, really have a strong mission to make a better world. I'm so happy and I'm proud for all of you here. And I think it's time to finish our session today. And once again, thanks a lot for participating in this session and also thanks a lot for those people who are watching us live right now. I'm so thankful and grateful for this. Now we can say bye. <laughs> and I hope we can see each other in the other opportunity. And for Ellen, mostly thank you so much for staying till the end of session. And I hope all of you can keep the spirit and then grow, become an absolutely amazing leader in the future and maybe we can share another story later. Thank you so much for all of you here. We will the world!